self-described as the number one greatest show in Las Vegas history, absent celebrating its 10th anniversary. Here to talk a little bit more about that, Brock Radke from Las Vegas Weekly. Nice to see you again, Brock. How are you doing? Hey. I'm great. Thanks Wonderful. for having me. Okay, so Brock, we've done many, many interviews over the years with the filthy mouthed gazillionaire. But for those not <laughs> familiar, how would you describe Absinthe's appeal? I think the great thing about Absinthe is that no matter what is happening in this show, whether it's the gazillionaire saying things that we can't repeat on the <laughs> yes. news or some uh, incredible acrobatic act. Everything that happens, you're going to want to tell somebody about. You leave that tent and you are excited and you want to share this experience with somebody. Ah, very good way to put it. Yes, and it's definitely an adult show, too. We want to let people know. Definitely for 18 sure. and over, for sure. Um, you mentioned the tent, Brock, <laughs> and uh, your article traces the show's history back to its debut in Las Vegas. Obviously, we all associate it with the tent, but didn't realize that the first offer was at a different resort property. Yeah, when the show, the show originated in New York, actually, and when it was on tour in 2008 in Miami, the producers struck a deal with the owners of the Fountain Blue Hotel in uh -huh. Miami. They were building the Fountain Blue in Las Vegas at the time, and they completed a deal to have Absinthe be the opening headlining show at Fountain Blue Las Vegas. Of course, we know how that story went. That hotel never opened, so the show had to find a different home. And that's where Caesar's Palace came in. Got it. Makes good sense. Well, that is Caesar's Palace gain, of course. Now, um, Absence production company Spiegel World has been pushing to get shows reopened during this time. No doubt be many changes to the show's format to make it socially distanced. Yeah, it's currently running right now. Uh, that tent usually holds more than 600 people. Uh, right now, it's about 160, I think. They've changed the seating arrangement. They've changed where the stage is. And they're hoping that restrictions are going to continue to loosen up so that they can gradually increase the capacity of the show. All right. And does Spiegel World have other productions um, in the works here in our area? They do. They have two other shows that have been running on the Strip for a while now. And Atomic Saloon Show at the Venetian oh, yeah. is going to reopen on May 5th. Okay, well, that's great to know. All right. Um, and I think we had them in. Uh, they were a, a duo pair, and they had very interesting things going on on the set with special things behind the doors, and um, they really took viewers into the experience. Am I correct? That's a great show, and it's really cool to be able, for that show to be able to reopen in its actual venue, which feels like an old Wild West saloon done Vegas style. So <laughs> that's going to be a lot of fun to come back. Very cool. Brock Radke, thank you so very much. Of course, everybody pick up Las Vegas Weekly's edition for the week, and we'll check back in with you in the not-too-distant future.